we all tell ourselves, I should be more active. I should be more productive. I should have done this. Why didn't I do this? I should, I should, I should. So many things. We believe that we need to do more, or that what we are currently doing is not enough for what we desire. Maybe we're just not doing something that we really want to do. I would say for the most part, given this, we know exactly what we need to be doing. I mean, you know when you fucked up and should apologize. You know that you have assignments due the next day, but you haven't started yet. You know what you need to do. <clears throat> On the flip side, there are instances where you don't actually know what to do. But proportionally, these instances are rare. This doesn't mean the quantity is necessarily small. Just that in comparison to the times that you do know what you need to do, it's small. It's like, let's say a 100 to 1 ratio. Out of the 100,000 times that you do know what to do, you have a 1,000 times that you actually don't. To be honest, that ratio might be bigger. And the thing is, you don't need to be lectured on what you need to do. And I feel the most strongly with this because I felt it. You know, the whole parents lecturing you. I got lectured about what I needed to do. And at the moment, They were right. But it doesn't mean that I didn't know. That doesn't mean that I didn't know what they were sort of preaching or telling me to do. Like I, I knew myself that I needed to do these things. I knew it. But I just didn't. And looking back, that means that I have a motive sort of a reason as to why. And you're mostly likely the same. You have a reason as to why you procrastinate. Fear of failure, <coughs> perfectionism, or maybe not even knowing when to start or where to start or how to start. You have a reason for not doing what you know what you need to do. To explore that reason. So with this video, I am technically lecturing. I mean, there's no way around it, right? Because I'm talking to, not you really, but a camera. So really, I'm just lecturing to myself. But I would like to think that it's a different form of lecturing. I'm telling you that you know what you need to do. And therefore, do it. Ask yourself, why do you stop? What is your reason? Seek to understand. There are times when you will, you'll hate yourself for procrastinating. And that's, I don't want to say natural. But it's I feel like it's widely um widely relevant to most people. And the thing is by hating yourself for procrastinating, what you're doing is just you're being your own parent again. You're not seeking to understand like you are replicating what your parents did to you. And if that has happened to you, did that change anything? 
Unless it got really extreme, I doubt it. <clears throat> it didn't really change anything. You just continued on doing stuff. So that's in terms of tasks, homework, activities, like things, like actions, here and now, more so. What about things to improve in the long term, like personal flaws? And you know, I had a recent chat with one of my friends, and we got onto the topic of like him wanting to know what I thought his biggest flaws were. One phrase I responded with was, you know them already. And that is how I felt. For me, I think that he wanted an encouragement that what he determined as his flaws were indeed his flaws. He wanted someone to empathize with him, someone to confirm for him. And in the end, he ended up telling me pretty much all of his flaws that he could think of, which were certainly more than what I could think of. <coughs> and he answered his own question because he already knew what he needed to change, what flaws he had that needed to be resolved. And out of all of them, there was one flaw that I came up with that at the time he didn't think about. That is a rare instance. But even still, he knew. He knew he had this flaw before. He just couldn't think of it. I think that's different than not knowing what to do. It's just at the moment, you forget. But you still know. You know. What if on the off chance, you are indeed missing something? I want to reiterate, most of the time, you aren't. Your mind is incredibly good at hiding or ignoring things. <coughs> oh, you don't need to apologize because they understand your intentions. You know, it isn't you that all of your girlfriends broke up with you. It isn't your fault that you're lonely and have no friends. All of these are excuses that your mind makes to convince you that you don't need to do anything. And it is incredibly successful. So how do you counter this? Adopt extreme responsibility. Concept I believe from Jocko Williams. Someone named Jocko. I forgot his last name, though. <laughs> it's taking responsibility for everything in and beyond your life. Someone else's day is going badly. You have responsibility. <coughs> I'm just dying a little bit. You have responsibility to make their day better. It's your responsibility. Your friend had a nasty breakup. It's your responsibility for not being a good enough friend to see through the flaws and hardship. And it's equally your responsibility to be there <coughs> for them at their lowest. And you may say, that doesn't seem fair. Maybe it isn't. But why should it? If you made excuses and put blame on others for the majority of your life, why shouldn't you accept more responsibility? It's your turn to swing the other way. You haven't taken enough responsibility. Think of this as penance. I'm not telling you to do this. But I think that you do. I think that you do know.
And what about the rare cases where you actually totally don't know what to do or you don't know about a specific fall? If you didn't know about it, it either isn't important or it's your fault for not noticing. Your life is your responsibility. That means everything. Your flaws, success, disappointments, achievements, everything. So, you know what you need to do, and so do I. Let's do it.